origin of many families.
Every other glory, every other glory, yeah. every other glory is under your glory, every other power, every other power is under your power, every other spirit, every other spirit is under your spirit.
so thankful and grateful that when we worship Jesus, strongholds of darkness, they fail, they fall. The king is enthroned. He rules and he reigns. Mountains are moved and cast into the sea. Oh, God, thank you that there's nothing impossible for you. Thank you that you are spirit. And they that worship you, worship in spirit and in the truth. We worship in the truth. We worship you. The perfect embodiment, the establishment of very truth. God, you are truth. So in the light of your truth, Lord, your perfect nature, your perfect character, your flawless faithfulness. We lift you high. We magnify you. We say, holy is the Lord. Great is the Holy One of Israel among us. We love to worship and lift you high. You are beautiful in every way. Yes, we love you, Jesus. We focus on you and not on any other technical element, God. Just you, God. We give you our hearts, our fresh offering, fresh worship, God, in spirit and truth. So wonderful is your unfailing love. Your cross has spoken mercy over me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart can fully
Lord, let the channel of communication be free and clear and uninhibited, Lord. Let your voice be loud and clear, God. This stage is available to you. This room is available to you. Every heart, this city, God. Lord, we are available for you to come and have your way. We love you. If it seems like we're going places we've never been, like we've left all we know to chase the voice on the wind, we're not lost. We're just looking for you. If it looks like we've lost all composure and pride, if it feels like we've laid our restraint to the side, we seem desperate. It's just cause it's true. If you're looking for a city, for a place to show your glory, look no further, we're available. If you're searching for a people who are hungry for revival, look no further, we're available. If it sounds like your kingdom's all we're talking about, if it sounds like we've tuned all the other noise out, we're just listening. We're just listening for you. And if our praise and our prayers seem outrageous and bold, if our worship gets too big for one building to hold, we're not making a show, we're just making room. Sing that again if our praise, and if our praise and our prayers seem outrageous and bold, if our worship gets too big for one building to hold, we're not making a show, we're just making room. If you're looking for a city, for a place to show your glory, look no further, we're available. If our praise and our prayers seem outrageous and bold, if our worship gets too big for one building goal, we're not making a show, we're just making room. Sing it again. If our praise and our prayers seem outrageous and bold, if our worship gets too big for one building goal, we're not making a show, we're just making room. You're looking for a city, for a place to show your glory. Look no further, we're available. Have your way. If you're searching for.
This is the place We are your people We're available To kingdom come Let your will be done Come and rule and reign Oh, in this place Let your kingdom Let your will be done. Come and rule and reign in this place. Oh, take the city, God. Oh, every heart for you. You deserve it all. Oh, we worship you. shine through all the praises that we shine through all the praises 
Every barrier comes falling down. When you move, let your peace reign. Let your presence reign. Take your place. Your will above all else, my purpose remains. The art of losing myself in bringing you praise, everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond. Zoom. 
to the whole world of what heaven looks like, God, of what it looks like when you come and fill us and transform us into your own image, God. Make us look more like you than the world, God, that we would shine like Jesus shines, that you would shine through us, God, and we would be a picture of what Jesus looks like to the whole world, God. We are available for you to have your way, God for you to take your rightful place on every throne in our souls, God, and you to transform us and we to just be the willing people that just say yes to you. We give you our yes. Let us be the generation that just gives you our radical yes, God. You can have our yes. You can have it all, God. And we just get to sit and worship in spirit and in truth and let you shine and let you transform people around us and that you shift things when we worship you, when we posture our hearts in a place of 24-7 worship. We are the house of prayer. Each one of us, God, our hearts, your dwelling place, your tabernacle, and we just posture ourselves to worship you 24-7 and let you shift every atmosphere that we walk into, God. We love you. We love you. We give you everything. We give you everything. We give you our heart. We give you our soul. Lord, we give you all control and we say yes to you come and consuming us at every level from the inside out, God. At every level, come and have your way. Oh God, we're singing deep tonight. Let's
let your fire go deep tonight. Fill our bellies, God. Fill our beings with your presence, God. Shift everything that needs to shift inside of us. Oh, God, we say yes. We say yes like, like a marriage, God, like a wedding day. We give you our heart, God. Would you put your ring, your stamp of rulership on our fingers, God? We want to represent you well. We want to, we are name bearers. We take your name. Lord, come and write your name on us. We are yours, God. Living testimonies. Living pictures. Living reflections of Jesus. We love you, we love you, we love you, Jesus. Mm. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, continue to have your way. Continue to flow in this place. Let your will be done. Have your way in Jesus' name. Come on, you guys. Let's hear it for worship again. It's a good night. Well, welcome to church. Welcome to Glad Tidings. My name is Paul Bryan. I'm one of the pastors on staff here at Glad Tidings. And uh, if you look in the seat back in front of you, if you want to take just a second, there is a connections card. And so what we've tried to do is make it easy for you guys to get connected. So uh, after the service tonight, if you want to look over your right shoulder, we have a connections booth. If you want to turn that in, we can give you a free coffee and a pastry. Um, and really, it's just and more than that. It's about getting you connected. So we have a lot of stuff going on. So you can ask as many questions as you'd like. So also, we just remind everybody every week that we have the GT Nevada County Church. Um, yeah, representing. It's going really well. And so we just want to remind everybody that the, uh, the address is on the app as well as on the website. So also, um, we have... Uh, it's kind of been something that we've had for, you know, for many years is uh, one of those places in our kids' ministry that they're doing an awesome job, but we are looking for some volunteers. And so if you have worked with special needs kids and uh, you have that just uh, in your heart, something you love doing, uh, we would cherish your time. And so, you know, so, so often we come to church and we have a lot of stuff going on, and what we want to do is uh, really help parents and, and some kids uh, to have a place that's uh, not just safe, but that they can come, learn, have a great time. And so if that's you, if you think, you know what, I'm already good at that, it's something I I'm used to doing. We'd love to have you. And so come on in. Also, you can uh, contact DJ or Rachel Christ, our kids pastor. So with that, I'm going to have the one and only Paul Tice come up here and give an announcement. Let's hear it for Paul. Good evening. Well, um, I'm just going to let you know, I'm celebrating my 50th year in education in Sutter and Yuba counties. It's a long time. <laughs> I've, I've done private school, charter school, traditional school, independent study school, just about everything that's out there, I've done it, okay? Been involved with it. Well, we have a chance, and I want you to put that slide up for me of the map. There's a map coming, there it is. Okay, so. We have a chance as a church and as a community to establish righteousness in our schools. Here's a way to do it. We have an election coming up in November for four trustee areas are open for election out of seven. Guess what that means? That means a lot when you think about it, okay? Um, if you look up there on the screen, the orange is up for election. That's trustee area number one. The dark blue is trustee area number two, and that's up for election. The light blue is trustee area number four. That's also up for election. And trustee area number five is the red, and that's also up for election. I am running. I put my name in the hat for trustee area two. Okay, they are, they are de designed to be, these are designed to be tied to the elementary schools that they, that are sit in there. Um, that's the way the election board has set it up. Okay, they're designed to be 
um, representative of, of the elementary schools actually in that area. Now you have to be in the area to run for the seat and the only ones that can vote for you have to live in that area. That's the new, it used to be at large and so it's not at large anymore. Now it's trustee areas, okay? So I'm throwing it out because we need godly men and women, men and women of integrity to step up and say, I could do that. Okay, I could do that. I could put my name in there. I could run. I could, I could say yes or no, you know. How many think we should have critical race theory taught in our schools? Well, neither do I. And at this point, we don't. And that's the way I want it to stay. I don't want, I don't want them to bring that in. Okay, we need people that will stand up and say no. Okay? There is, we're, the filing for this election, because it's November, it's after the primary, it's a November election, the filing is from July 18th to August 12th, okay? It's after the primary, and after the primary has been finalized. There are no fees, there's no fees, and there's no petition that you have to have because it's a school board. Okay, so that's kind of even better, okay? There are, like I said, there are seven trustee areas. Four are up on this election cycle. Like I said, you must live in the area you represent and only the people in your area can vote for you. So pray about it, talk to your friends, and talk to me, okay? I know what's going on out there. I know what, I've been at the board meetings, watching the dynamics of the board, ooh. <laughs> Give me some chills. <laughs> Just sitting there, you know? Um, but to me, there's, there's just been some funky decisions made recently. And I'm watching them and going, what in the world? Where, are, where is your head today? You know, and so I think we have a, like I said, we have a real chance, ladies and gentlemen, a real chance of turning. And you know, the, the prophetic words over our church for years have been, you will be an influence in your city. You will have influence in your city. You will have influence in your region. What better way to have influence to help our children? Okay, to help our children than to be on the school board. So you need to think about it, pray about it. There is a map like this, okay, like that. It does give you all the borders, you know, the, it, and it's on the back table, so you can pick it up. If you want any more information than that, come and see me. I can help you. All righty, have a great night. All right, I'm going to have the youth pastor come up. Bailey, you want to come on up here and give a summer camp announcement? All right, well, summer camp. I know we're still a little ways out, um, but I, ever again, every year we do this, I have multiple parents come up like a couple weeks beforehand. They're like, I had no clue that we were doing a summer camp. The last few years, I've said, I'm sorry, we only had like a month of promotion. We tried as best we could. This year is not like that. We've been promoting this for like, I don't know, like four months now. It's been a long time. And we have still another two and a half months of promotion. So um, for this uh, trip, we're going to be going. Who here, who here went to the women's retreat? Raise your hand. Nice. Okay. All right. So if you have been to Heartstone, it is amazing. We love Heartstone. The food is incredible. Um, just they have an amazing atmosphere there. So we'll be going up to Heartstone this year. Um, we have some amazing, um, we've had amazing camps there before, and I, I know this is going to be just a phenomenal camp. Um, it's $275, which again, I know every year we do this, everyone's like, it's a lot of money, especially if you have multiple kids, which I totally get that. Do not say you can't go because of the money. Please come talk to me. We will have people, we have people, I have, all the time people come up to me, hey, I have work available, I have this available, do you have any students that need uh, money for camp, all that kind of stuff. So if you have a student that wants to go, they don't have the money for it, but they wanna go, please still come talk to me. Um, we will be shutting down uh, registration a, a couple weeks before camp, which again, still gives you lots of time, but um, same thing last couple years. We'll have like 40 people signed up, 
And then the week before we go to camp, another 40 show up last minute. I'm like, okay, well, we're gonna have to, I'm having to buy stuff last minute. It, it just is a pain. So if you could please help me and sign up now. Even if I just get a thing from you saying, hey, my students halfway interested, please let me know. Um, if you have any questions, we'll be in the back uh, in that table and uh, I'll be able to answer any questions you have. Awesome, thanks. All right, thank you, thank you. Awesome. All right, with that, I'm gonna have them uh, show the family camp video. Hey, are you ready to do this video? Mm-hmm, yeah, that sounds fine. Did you even hear me? Yeah, I heard you. What did I say? You said what I say. <laughs> okay, we have to do this video. Oh. Okay. Actually, okay. actually, I have to take this first. Sorry, just one second. One second. Okay. There are so many things competing for our time and attention these days, whether it's work or school or phone calls or texts or gaming. We have more access to distractions than ever before. So in the middle of that, how do we prioritize and protect our family time? And if your family is like our family, how do you make family time quality time and not just more time to argue? We want to invite you to join us at GT Family Camp this July 31st to August 3rd. It'll be a chance to unplug from distractions and reconnect with your family as we enjoy the beautiful outdoors of Heartstone Bible Camp. There'll be games, fishing, archery, a chance to make memories with other families, and we'll also have guest speakers, Drs. Paul and Virginia Friesen with us. And our goal is to really empower you to leave with tools for building family connections that reflect God's heart and are strong enough to weather any challenge. And for more registration or information, go to our church website, churchofgladtidings.com, or check out the GT app. So if you have kids at home, please make the investment and join us at family camp. Come on. Awesome, awesome. You know, the, uh, the current status of family in our, in our country is scary. And uh, um, inside and outside of the church. And so there's nothing better, I, I don't believe, than actually taking time away to have your family poured into. Come on. And I know it's always expensive. There's a lot of reasons. But um, uh, DJ and Rachel Chris, are, they're an amazing couple. And I'm super excited that they're passionate about this and about family camp. But more than that, if you guys are out there and think, you know what, I would love to do that. We can't afford it. Same thing. Begin to pray into it. Ask God for finances. And, and all the things that we want to do so often cost money. I know that. But don't allow finances to just pull you out of that because there's nothing more important than family. We all know that. And so uh, I would just encourage you guys to make time for your kids and your family because they're gonna, we're not just pouring to the kids, we're pouring to the whole family, right? It'd be a great time. So get signed up. With that, I'm going to have the ushers come on down and give our tithes and offerings. So, <clears throat> so God, we just thank you for your amazing grace on this house, God. We thank you for all the things you let us do all the time, not just here in Yuba City, but all over the world, God. As we just lay down our 10%, we just ask you to bless every business and every household, and we say thank you. With that, we say Jesus' name. Amen. Dave just ran away. He's coming back. Let's hear it for Dave Bryan. All right. I had to go get my, my sign. So, um, Paul Tice shared with us the whole idea of being salt and light in our community, and um, <clears throat> we all need to do everything we can. And so, uh, in addition to uh, filling those places in the school board for Yuba City, um, we have a vote coming up. Uh, there's, how many have ever faced a vote and not really had time to research everything the way you wanted to and you wondered like, eh, wonder who I should have voted for here. So I know that's the case with most people, certainly a lot more than to put your hand up just now. And so uh, Lou Benninger is one of the most informed guys that I know and uh, I often call him to ask him about um, positions, uh, uh, different people that are running and what they think about this and that. 
And so for the primaries, uh, Lou has put together a sheet called Lou's Picks. Again, um, these are Lou's Picks. And um, Lou is, uh, uh, he has good reasons for all of the people on this sheet. But of course, it's a free election. And so if you already know who you're, you're uh, going to vote for in every situation, fine. If you don't, pick up this sheet. And if you have a, a different idea in mind, uh, Again, it's a free election. But if you don't know, I would recommend that you take a look at who Lou's voting for. Because unlike most of us, he spends a whole lot of his life checking out these kind of things. So you can pick up Lou's picks. And um, I, let me just say this. Voting ignorantly um, has a 50% chance of, uh, <laughs> of, of being a bad thing instead of a good thing. And so, uh, again, these are available for you. Wanted you to know about that. Also, um, we need poll workers. Uh, I know that this group knows all about the atrocities that happened during the last election. And so we need uh, uh, stout-hearted people that will help in the polls and make sure that things are on the up and up. And so um, Holly... Uh, is heading that up, and I think, where are you at, Holly? There you are. Okay. So, um, do you have something back at the table? Do you? Okay. So, just contact her at uh, her number. That's uh, Holly Verhalen, and the number's up on the screen. It's five three zero seven zero one fifty four forty nine. Let's get involved in that. Again, you know, if we don't do everything that we possibly can. Then when things don't go our way uh, in our, our area, we have nobody to blame but ourselves. Now, um, I have long thought that the two most significant niches, though all of them are significant, but in a county, I think the two most significant niches are the sheriff uh, and the, the DA. And uh, so uh, we've not had uh, uh, good luck with DAs in Sutter County. And um, we put some energy into electing the DA that is in place right now. And um, sadly, uh, after she was elected, she did nothing that she promised that she would do. How many have ever heard of a politician doing something like that? <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, we're trying to get her out of there since she showed her true colors. Yeah. And so I met with Jennifer Dupre, um, Day, day before yesterday, I think, in my office. Yeah, maybe on yesterday morning in my office. And um, she's a Catholic lady. She's a good lady. Uh, when when uh, she ran against Amanda Hopper last time, we, we really deliberated because we knew she was a good lady. And um, they, you know, it was six, one half dozen, the other. We went with uh, Amanda, helped her get elected. And again, she's shown her true colors. So met with her and I said, Jennifer, we will, we will do two things. We will help in every way we can to get you elected. And we will hold you accountable every day that you are in office. And uh, she said, oh, wow. <laughs> and I said, well, uh, I know you don't know me very well, but uh, both of those things are true. And uh, we... We actually had a really good talk, and she's a good lady. Um, she's been a, uh, a prosecuting attorney for 18 years. Uh, she, by the way, uh, was the, took the lead in holding PG&E accountable for the campfire and uh, all that happened up there. And um, uh, she's a really, really good choice. So we have these available. And I hope that you'll pick them up, particularly if you have a business or some visible place to, to put them on a window. You, how many noticed that we had one up on the front doors when you came in? Okay. So uh, you can take these handbills and do that. And uh, if you have um, a place to put up a yard sign, I think we have about 30 of these. All right. And so you can pick them up at the table. And um, 
Let's do all we can. Now, listen, um, we do have a good sheriff, and he's, he's running uncontested, and he's a good man. But uh, the DA can, um, can short-circuit almost anything a sheriff tries to do. It's really, really important that we have a good DA. All right, so I told Jennifer that we would be praying for her. Uh, I, I asked if I could pray for her, and uh, I, I put my hand on her head and just prayed the Holy Ghost all over her. But anyway, um, uh, I, I want us to really uh, work to get her in office because it affects every one of our lives. I don't have time to tell you all of the reasons that it is crucial that we get Amanda Hopper out, but there are a lot of reasons, all right? So, wanted you to know about that. Okay, uh, with that, uh, I would like to turn this over to my dear wife, and uh, she said the ladies had a great time at the ladies' camp, and she's going to introduce our speaker for tonight. Hi, ladies. If you were at the ladies' retreat, stand up right quick, if you're still able to. <laughs> fabulous, fabulous. Did you have a wonderful time? Yeah. Yay. Did you come home tired or refreshed? I heard both. I heard both. Just one second, and we will have our guest speaker come up here. Honestly, I think it's possible to be completely refreshed and absolutely exhausted all at one time. And that's what I am. I'm like, that was awesome. It was wonderful. Actually, we had such a fun family time. It was amazing. We got to know each other, got to sleep in rooms with 10 of us all together while we were stepping over each other to get up in the middle of the night and go out and find the bathroom that we couldn't find. It was amazing. Totally awesome. And in our little cabin of, I don't know how many, maybe eight or 10 people, we had a brand new person come into the kingdom. Let's give her a hand. Isn't that amazing? Yep. Baby Christians, it's amazing. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing to be a part of the family of God. Beautiful, and we are excited. Angels rejoice when that happens, and maybe it happened multiple times over up there. It was a beautiful, wonderful time. Is Dr. Janine in the house? There you are. Come up here. Dr. Janine is one of my favorite people. Look at, she is our model for our Radiate Love. This is our t-shirts from the ladies' camp, and we also have... Um, isn't she darling? It's ridiculous. Such a cutie. Anyway, so much fun. And her husband's always up there flagging. He's just a delight. Fabulous family. Anyway, um, we also had wonderful sweatshirts up there that say Embassy of Heaven. And we're just doing it to promote the truth of who we are. We want to radiate love. We're an Embassy of Heaven. The enemy cannot win if you radiate love. It's not possible. The enemy goes down hard when we're radiators of love. And we had a wonderful time. My fabulous friend, Dr. Jeanette, and her husband, Ted, are here tonight, and um, I wanted my wonderful friend to introduce her and say a few things about the ladies' retreat, because she understands stuff I couldn't possibly understand. Uh, you know, Heidi Baker always says, too big, too small, your heart isn't big enough and your brain is too big, well, that's never been my problem. It's just never been my problem. It's too big, too small. So words get used that are this big. I'm like, what? What are we talking about, right? Anyway, my precious, fabulous friend has a big heart and a great brain, and I'm going to let her introduce my wonderful friend that's so smart, and she's going to tell some of the things she learned up there. Wonderful. Um, thank you, and thank you. You, we decided that she's the the party, right? The party girl, the mom of everybody, and um, she doesn't have to wear a T-shirt that says "Radiate Love" because she does it just naturally. Um, and that's also what Jeanette do, does. So um, I want to just say a couple things, and one is that um, we've been let down by healthcare in the last couple of years, right? Um, and on behalf of all healthcare everywhere, I apologize for that. Um, I think of it like religion. We're stuck in tradition. We don't know how to get out of that, and we don't, many, many of them don't want to. Now, um, Dr. Jeanette 
Thatcher is totally out of that, um, stuck in the tradition, stuck in the mud. And um, I came wondering and thinking, and she had, like she said, you know, the mesenteric plexus and, you know, the hypothalamus and the pituitary and the pineal glands. And I'm, I'm going, oh, oh, yeah, got it. Mm -hmm, okay. And those are some of the words that uh, Cheryl said. What? What? Um, and it looks like we're going to get to see your doodles tonight. So she kind of makes some crazy doodles, and they may be hard to uh, get, but, you know, she'll laugh at them. But one of the things that I wanted to say is that as um, when you wear something like this, um, it's kind of like having a, um, a billboard on your chest or a bumper sticker on your car. You better try and live up to that, right? Um, some people don't have to try. We know Cheryl doesn't, and we know that Johnette doesn't. Um, she was praying for the ladies before she even knew anybody, before she even had been introduced. And she said with complete truthfulness, just out in the audience, I love you. And, you know, I love you, I love you, I love you all. And I think probably when she comes up here, you're going to see that too, that she just has this um, natural, that she's worked on for a lot of time, um, exuding love that comes out of her. Now, that means that she's going to be a different healthcare practitioner, right? She's not looking to um, build an empire, she says. She's looking to forward the kingdom. And that's different. And we need to listen to that. So when she brings forth some new ideas, I think, remember that she is going back to the word and saying, what does the word say? She's listening to Holy Spirit and says, what, what are you saying to me, Holy Spirit? And then she's applying it out of the goodness of her heart for the forwarding of the kingdom business. So Dr. Thatcher, would you please come forward and... <laughs> so, so sweet. So sweet. Thank you so, so much. Oh my goodness. Does the mic I'm wearing, I can't draw <laughs> and write at the same time. So, so I, I put it on and it said, it, the lights were on, but Hello. the one that was sitting there, is that one yours? No. Yeah, that one should be working. Yeah, is that on? Not like it was. But. But I don't know, oh, you people up there are magic, okay? <laughs> That's all I know. Okay, so hi. Um, we're from Reading, my husband Ted and I are both chiropractors and we've been in practice for 30 years. We have three amazing sons who all love Jesus, an amazing daughter now, and another one coming next Saturday. And so we also have three grandkids, although we don't look like we are grandparents, of course. And, um, and then I have a second, my second born son has not met his wife yet. So he's 27, single. So just throwing it out there, okay? <laughs> Every time I play matchmaker, it works sometimes, but not all the time. So, so my journey in healthcare is to bring love to everybody. And um, it's, my husband and I are the same way. He's, a, he's an amazing healer. My husband has the patience of Job and the faith like Jesus, really. He's just an amazing man. We've been in love for 30 years. We're celebrating our 30th year anniversary this year. And um, that's something, okay? That's something these days. And so um, we just really um, complement each other and where he's um, strong in the areas where I'm weak and vice versa. So we just are just a great little couple. So I love my husband. Um, and so anyway, in, in my walk with the Lord, I want miracles. I, I actually, my husband and I really don't want a clinic filled with people. <laughs> we want the word of God to be what it says it is so that people can get well. And if it was up to me, I tell my patients when they come in, for um, a report of findings or a consultation, I'm like, the goal is not for you to see me. The goal is for God 
to work through you. So we can do all the things we know to do factually. We, we take data in, which is great, because we have a baseline. And then we, um, you know, whatever we can do cellularly, how we can help you neuromuscular, skeletally, and decrease inflammation, that's all really important. But my, my wheelhouse is moving into um, what does God's word say and how can you get well with that? That's, that's the kick, okay? And so um, uh, a real basic thing I teach my patients, so I'll just treat you guys like my patients because that's easiest for me, then the pressure's off. <laughs> and just so everybody can see this, I don't know if everybody can see it this way. So I am like, this is like flannel graph Jesus. Some of you will understand that. And so I draw on the board because this is in my consultation room, okay? And so I'm always drawing. And so I had a scripture the Lord gave me during worship, so I want to start with that, and then we'll get into some things. And so it's in Psalm 110. Where is it? Yeah, it's a verse, verse in Psalm 110. Let's not kid ourselves. Let's get our glasses on. Yahweh said to, to my Lord, the Messiah, sit with me as enthroned ruler while I subdue your enemy, they will bow low before you as I make them a footstool for your feet. Come on, wow, okay? So whatever we're going through, this is what he's telling us. He said, sit with me. He didn't say get up there and, you know, get all crazy and do all this deliverance. All he said is, come and sit with me as an enthroned ruler. And I'll, God, not me, I'll subdue your every enemy and make them a footstool. I love that part too. Okay, so in saying that, one of the things I, I teach is, um, I guess I'll just talk about an encounter I had years ago, and I, ha I repeat it quite a bit because um, it's strength to us. So what's mine is yours. So uh, um, years ago, I, uh, I had an encounter where I was um, um, entering into the throne room of heaven. And it, it was all, very awe-inspiring, and um, you just fall out on the floor. And in the center of the throne room is obviously God the Father, and you can't even look at him because just, there's just activity in the heavenlies and inside of God. He's like pulsating, like, whoo, whoo, whoo. And there's thunder and lightning moving. It's just, it's incredible. And so, you know, you fall out, and I'm laying on the floor, and the Lord, all he has to do is move his little finger, his little pinky, and angels start worshiping him. And just, you know, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And out from his midst walks Jesus. So, so he was inside of the Father. I mean, you know, you hear about all that, and, and you start envisioning it until it becomes real in your own heart. And so they were one together, which, of course, we know that, but I was seeing it live, and I had the Holy Spirit in me, and so Jesus took my hand, and he brought me into himself, and we went and sat down on the throne. Of course, I probably was, you know, weeping and all, all of that good stuff was going on, but the point is, is that is where I'm seated. And this verse reminded me of what I actually have to do, which is nothing but rest. And he does the rest. That's my kind of warfare, really. Okay, so when I'm talking to my patients, I want them to remind themselves that, here we go with my little drawings, okay? So this represents a city. Okay, and then here I am. Here you are. Okay, how cute are we? And then up here is, is the mountaintop. I was laughing because I have to just divert. Uh, on the way in here, this, the Butte Mountain, is that right? Yep. Butte Mountain is the lowest mountain range, right? In the state? Small. In the world. Smallest mountain range in the world, and, and it was set up to be used by other people that we won't get into. I think that's funny, because that's the highest point they can get, is my point. But anyway, so, so 
So we are seated up here, and we love them, and we just send love to them, because they love, God loves them. Okay, so anyway, they're just listening to the wrong kingdom. So anyway, here we are. I am now inside of the Father, okay? And the fa- and he, and all powerful, all knowing, all great God knows what my problem is. Now, you know, sometimes we get stuck down here in the, you know, principalities and powers and all that stuff. But actually, we're not down here. So, I want my patience and you to be strengthened to take your seat from here up to here. Right? Because this is where we win. We don't win when we're caught up in everything. So we have to remember and move into our positions. There's so many mountain ranges here. It's one of the things I love about California is that we've gotten to um, just go and sit in high places and the peace that moves across those ranges are amazing. And so that's, that's one of the first things I talk to them about. And um, sometimes when they're not uh, saved, I just discuss positions and getting to places where it's peaceful, which is higher, higher places. And so what we were going to talk about, um, I'm going to talk about the breath of God today. There's lots to talk about, but we'll go back to the basics so um, everybody can be current. And one of the things I love is I love what the New Agers bring to the table, because they're looking for what we already have. God bless them. And um, I just want to show you what we already have. So we don't have to be, whoops, I left it over here. Um, so we don't have to be upset about it. We can just say, oh yeah, but you got it wrong. So, um, so here's our body. This is me. I, this is, I sketch all the time at, at work. Okay, I'm going to put a skirt on because it's me, just to differentiate. And here is my heart. And you, okay, our hearts. So... There are energy centers in the body, and they're called plexuses, okay? Plexus, P-L-E-X-U-S, okay? That's a plexus, okay? In the New Age world, they like to call them chakras. God bless. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then they have this one, but that's actually the Holy Spirit. Okay, so, so each one of these plexuses are named after a region and a gland that helps master them. And a plexus is nothing more than neuronal connections that move through that area, okay? And so how does it all talk is the big deal, okay? So in where our heart is, is our lungs and our thymus gland, right? Okay, and so what we're gonna talk about is breath and the heart and love and how to start moving in and out of here instead of our thinking when it goes down the wrong rabbit trails and how our emotions are ending up in our body. So we're gonna move out of thinking is the language of the brain and emotions are the language of the body. But when you come from this place first, which is love and joy and peace and patience, kindness, thankfulness, freedom, and the like, you actually begin to cause your heart become, to become a magnet. And when, well, so I'm getting ahead of myself. So, so anyway, so we want to move from here instead of here. Because usually in my little world of teaching, we have 66,000 thoughts a day. It's a lot. That's 1.4 a second. And the Word of God tells us to hold everyone captive. So, Jesus tells us to, hello, eyes up front, eyes up front. Look at me, look at me. Focus on me. Spend time with me. Do life with me. So my little thinking doesn't go down the wrong path where I am, instead of moving from here, I'm moving from here, which is causing an effect here to drive the system down. Or am I living from, when I'm living from here, I cause the system to come to life. Okay? So, 
So let's just talk about breath. Let's talk about the breath of heaven. So good, you guys. So in the beginning, in the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse um, 7 and 9 is where we'll hang. <clears throat> Yahweh scooped up a lump of soil, sculpted at a man, and blew into his nostrils the breath of life. The man came alive, a living soul. And then on chapter, I mean, um, verse 9, just looking. Yahweh God made all kinds of beautiful trees to grow there, fruitful trees to satisfy taste. In the middle of the garden, he planted the tree of life, and he planted the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So, so when he, 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 he did creation, the first big, bigger deal. Thank you so much. God bless you. Um, so sweet. Um, so when he created, um, when he blew life into, into um, Adam, he blew into his nostrils, okay? And um, the takeaway with that that I want you to get is that there's two types of breath that we t do with our bodies, okay? Now, if he breathed into my nose and I became a living being, then my breath brings me life still, okay, right? And so now they've gone, um, the art of meditation is to do deep breathing, okay? And because it brings you into this moment, which I'll talk about in a minute, but the breath then, I need to pay attention to how and what I'm breathing because if he took the time to breathe into us to bring life, um, then we need that. We need that breath. And we need it to be, to be in our conscious. And the reason why, I'll get to in a minute. Okay, so he, when he created Adam, he, didn't, he created Adam on the sixth day. He created man, okay? And on the, then the seventh day, he rested, okay? And he didn't rest because he was tired and just was like, wow, I just need a day off, you know? Because he's God. He doesn't need a day off, okay? He wanted to spend time with you. That's why he created you. He didn't, he, he, it's just not something else to do. And so when we um, took, and took part of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, when we there's so much knowledge. There's so much knowledge out there, and it's at your fingertips, okay? And so we rattle through that. And one of the things that is great about this exercise, is that, that the lessons that I, I've learned and taught my patients, is that, that um, it proves the Word of God. Science is proving God's Word. Um, quantum physics is proving God's Word. And I love that. That's just awesome. And so, anyway, he, did, he created you for a relationship. And so, it's, it's time. It's time now to rise up in yourself and make time for the one that created you and loves you more than anyone else on the face of the earth. Like, love just needs to pour through you. But if you don't turn your affections towards the Lord, he cannot pour into you. He's waiting for you, okay? So I just want to inspire you about how loved you are. I, I, I've gone through a lot in my lifetime, and I have to say the con most consistent thing in my life is my husband's love for me. Now, I'm like a helium balloon, and he is rock solid. You know, he's constantly got to hold on to me because I'm going all different places. But it's been his reflection of love that has impacted me the most to teach me even just to love myself over the years. So we need our friends. We don't need to do it alone. Enough said. Okay. So anyway, so now we're going to talk a little bit about the breath. So yeah, just, just really want to drive home that point of resting 
and relationship. And love the World Wide Web, don't ever want to be without it. But when it comes down where the rubber meets the road, my time with Jesus is of the utmost importance to my health, always and forever. And when people are coming against me, when principalities, powers, and despots are coming against me, we release love to them, straight into them, because they are of great, great, great value to the kingdom of heaven. Okay? And they're just listening to the wrong voice. The power of God is real, and it wants them just as much as it wants all of us. Okay? So, so I'm thankful that they're hungry for power. It's time for them to come into the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Okay? And so, um, so that's it. That's rest. Okay? So I can get into all this other stuff, but when it comes down to it, it's love and rest and receiving, receiving it. Okay? All right, so there's two kinds of breathing. There's mouth breathing and there's nasal breathing. So I thought, well, if he breathed into my nostrils, I better be breathing through my nose. It's a little weird, but I'll do it. So I, um, I went on that venture and I read a lot of books about the breath. And um, now I know for certain that that's the better way to breathe for many reasons. But I'll just, I'll start. there's three pillars to breathing. And one of the pillars is just the, the um, body biomechanics of it, which is your nose, your soft palate, because actually chewing, we suck our food down this day and age, chewing actually strengthens our teeth, but it actually helps you to digest and rest because of the nerves that go with the muscles of mastication, which is chewing. Anyway, so breathing your nose, your soft palate, the apparatus in the nose, the back of your throat, your airway, down into your lung field, your bronchioles, your bronchi, and then your bronchioles, and then out to the rest of the tissue. Not to mention, and also the muscles of, um, of uh, in inhalation and exhalation, inspire, inspiration, going up higher to be inspired, to breathe in, exhale, to release. Um, and then the diaphragm, which helps when that is working better and stronger. It also helps move your lymphatics and pump and clean, okay? So that's, that's just the simple part of the body, the biomechanics. So then there's the biochemistry. And for all intensive purposes, what we're going to talk about is just oxygen and um, carbon dioxide. You breathe in oxygen, you breathe out carbon dioxide. And it has to stay in a delicate balance. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> and then there is the cadence, <clears throat> excuse me, the cadence of breath, the cadence of breath. So, so it's the rhythm and the pace in which you breathe, okay? So the rhythm, most of us on a normal day where we go fast, short and shallow breaths, okay? The first 50% of our respiratory system does not have oxygen, carbon dioxide exchange. So if we're always short, fast, and shallow, we're not gonna get as much O2. Um, I have seen tons and tons of blood work from, that, come, that has come out of Spain now. And this gentleman in Spain, he's brilliant. Um, he's an MD over there, and he looks at blood work under a microscope. And so he goes real cellular to see what's happening to the blood. And he can even read trauma in the blood. The guy's just amazing. Um, <clears throat> so when I've read these, I just see time and time and time again. I see hypoxia, which means low oxygen in the tissues, in the bloodstream. Okay, so to drill that home, the point is, is that we need to, the second cadence of breath is l slow, long, and deep breath. Slow, long, and deep. So um, the average person take, takes uh, 12 to 18 breaths a minute. And when we go slow, long, and deep, we can move into 10, get down to 12, go to 10, go to 8, go to 6. And, and that's something if you can get down to 6, because then you increase your ability to pull oxygen to 
That's pretty great. 12, I mean, 10 is 70%. So the idea is to learn how to deep breathe, and I'll kind of show you that. We'll run through a little um, exercise together. Because the girls did it, you guys could do it too, and those that weren't there. Um, so the, the importance of it is, is that your body needs oxygen to live. And nothing evil can live in the presence of oxygen. The more oxygen you have, you clean out your tissues, everything's more efficient, you can lower your blood pressure. There's studies out now that asthma can get cured, dyspnea can get cured, um, all your organs run more efficient. Like I said, O2, anxiety drop off because you learn how to breathe, okay? And so when we breathe, you sleep better, too. Who doesn't need a better night's sleep? Okay. Yeah. I won't go there. Okay. So, <laughs> so only so many kettles you want to open at one time. Okay. So, so when we're, when we're, um, when, <laughs> so funny. Just trying to get my, my, my picture going here in my head. Shaba that. Okay. So I'll go over here. So when you do your uh, deep breathing, okay, you have different brain waves. Beta's present, like to, like being uh, right now. I'm operating in full full blown beta, okay. And stress will hang here too, okay. Alpha, theta. These are brain waves that are moving your your thought processes around. As soon as you deep breathe, okay, you slow down you move into alpha, which is the creative brainwave. It helps you to be more creative, okay? I was taking a neuro-coaching class. One of the first things they taught us to do is deep breathe and um, yawn, because you'll, you, can, you can access your alpha brainwaves fast. The idea, when, when they said that, the more I was reading, they were saying that this center, this heart center, this heart plexus, this thymus gland region is the divine. Get out of Dodge. They said it. They actually said this is where all creation, I see it, it comes from, right here. So that means every time I breathe, every time I take in oxygen at a better, better quality, better, lower, stronger, deeper, I am recreating my cell structure inside my body, just from oxygen, okay? That's like, that's a heavy hitter. You gotta think about that for a minute, okay? If this is true, and I wanna say that my husband had COVID, and that sucker went right after the divine, okay? Not on my watch, right? That's BS, but anyway. Okay, so, sorry, <laughs> excuse me. Stricken from the record. All right, so alpha <laughs> creative, okay? <laughs> So we want to get back to here. Yeah. So we want to know that we can cre recreate ourselves. At this very moment, you can begin to recreate yourself just from breathing. Because your entire body turns over all new cells all the time. You know, you're always changing over. Okay? And so what's happening? You'll be a lot more efficient. And what if you could get more oxygen to your toes so you didn't have neuropathy? Okay? What? Well, what would happen? Because you decided to do deep breathing. That's a gift from God. He gave you the gift of breath to subdue the earth. We're here to subdue this sucker and spread love, okay? And you can't do it if you're busted, right? So we all have our part. So, okay, so it's, it's slow, long, and deep, okay? So now, here's another beautiful nugget. So they were doing studies, the Heart Math Institute, and three times a day, 10 minutes a day, 30 minutes, people, 30 minutes. They, they, have, they, they hooked up people's brains and hearts and all that kind of stuff, and they came out with that as soon as they, people took deep breaths, began to meditate and sit in love, their immune system would upregulate its IgA, which is like a good little flu shot, 50%, five zero percent. Like we need that. 
just, that's just that. That was just one thing that they did. I'll get into more tomorrow. But the breath of heaven that we've been given is to your benefit. So it slows you down, moves you into alpha, so you can be creative. So the guy that was teaching me this neuro coaching, these neuro coaching elements, he goes around from corporation to corporation, teaches them. There's a bell that you can listen to, a gong, and it brings the earth tone, and it calms you down immediately too. When you sit at a waterfall, it's an alpha brain wave. That's why we love outdoors, you know? So it shifts us over because the sounds of nature bring peace to us. Anyway, so this alpha brainwave, so he has got these CEOs of these huge corporations every hour stopping just for five minutes and allows them all to breathe because their creative energy starts flowing and they pull from peace instead of going boom, 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 boom. What do I got to rack out today? So that is, you know, that's us. So it's just 10 minutes a day, three times a day, but you have to start somewhere, right? Everyone's got to start somewhere, okay? <clears throat> Psalm 33, verse 6 says, All he had to do was speak by his spirit wind, command, and God created, there's the word created again, the heavens. Now we breathe, taking, taking wonder, let everyone worship Yahweh, this all-inspiring inspiration breath, creator, all-inspiring creator, his words he breathed and worlds were created. Let there be, amen, let there be light. We are light beings. We are light beings. That oxygen is flammable, you know, so... So just think about that, you know. So we're flames. We are flames. We have a flame, a seal of a fire over our hearts, it says in Song of Solomon, ch chapter 8. Um, just moving through this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> In, in the verse of, um, in 110 of Psalms that we were just reading, he, he, was, he was asking us to just sit, come and sit with him. And I keep going back to this because that's what we need to do. And I loved the video up here with the cute little couple, you know, and uh, they had their iPods going. And so the idea is to get you to put all that down, you know, and spend some time seeking the Lord and get him on your to-do list. Because that's, that's the best, the best way to go is to have him help you, help you with everything. I had a, years and years and years ago, I had a terrible um, self-esteem. I was raised in a family of five brothers and a sister, and, you know, we all clueless. And uh, so they, they, uh, they would just pick on me and say some of the most unkind things to me. And, um, you know, it says sticks and stones, baby. But actually, sticks and stones do go in and they go down deep inside of you. So I had a really low self-esteem. It just makes me laugh when I think I'm standing up here. <laughs> it's like the last thing I'd want to do. Anyway, so, so um, I got saved and um, the Holy Spirit started talking to me about asking him what I should wear every day. Because I go through 800 outfits, you know, just beating myself. I can just get the bat out. Might as well have hit myself in the head based on my 66,000 thoughts a day. So, so, I mean, even to this day, I'll just be like, Lord, what do you want me to wear today? Because I don't want to think about it. Boom. Here's your outfit. Go. So it's just even those little things. They matter. So whatever you're going through, it matters to God. I had a patient come in just recently. She wanted to lose weight. And she wanted to be put on a program. And I just said, and she's, she's, a, she's a Holy Ghost girl. And her daughter sings at Bethel. And um, she, I said, now let's just hit the brakes. 
Okay, let's find out A, what your blood work looks like, but then B, what your blood sugars look like, and then C, and most importantly, let's ask Holy Spirit every single day what you should be doing to win. And so she kept a journal. And at the end of this now, I guess we're at over four months now, she ended up losing, you know, 20 some pounds. But she was, she was, I gave her parameters, but I told her it's not religion, okay? Here's some parameters, but bend to what the Holy Spirit's going to tell you to do, okay? Because we all need to move. We all need it, okay? We all need to eat well. You know, I, I would have done great with a bag of chips for my lo- the rest of my life, but it's not what the Lord had in store for me. I love potato chips. A weakness. Um, so anyway, there are, she just has to, she had to bend to listen to the Holy Spirit. So she was starting to de- detox too fast, and she was listening, and so the Holy Spirit said, have some um, sweet potato fries, you know, in your air fryer. So that's what she did. But I mean, it's just little things. You guys, he is closer than a brother, <laughs> right? That's what the Word says. He'll talk to you about everything. And so she kept this journal. And as she was writing, I just was beaming because the Holy Spirit just worked with her, even to working out. Because in order to, um, one of the parameters is, is that, okay, what is your weight? What's, what's your weight that you want to be at? Multiply that times 12. And that's your caloric intake for the day, period. And then you got to start moving. That's a lot of work, okay? Shoo especially when you eat a lot. But it's up to you. It's up to you what you want to do. So I told her, okay, go in here, because we have to deflame some things, and start, start here, eat whatever you want in this category, have at it. You know, and sweet potato fries were in it. So anyway, so the, the point is, is that as she did it, she just had newer, newer, newer revelations. And so finally, I let her get on my, our weight co- body contouring laser, um, where these lights just move around across you, and it causes a pore to open in the fat cell, and the fat leaks out. I, I don't like to let just anybody on that, because if your blood sugar is 130 or 40 or whatever, it's a mute point until we get your blood sugars under control. Anyway, so she was very successful, and she lost 12, almost 13 inches in 10 10 body contouring opportunities. That's amazing. But it's because she she took the Holy Spirit with her on her adventure. Okay? Yeah, so I'm just so proud of her. So, okay. So breathing. Just make sure. So I just want to make sure that we, you know, breath is obviously vitality. It's a vital sign. Okay. Your O2 increases in your blood. You have more energy. You increase your efficiency of the body overall. Your emotional health comes up because your oxygen levels come up and your depression goes down. It restores your bodily systems that were destroyed by stress. Um, your heart, your beats per minute. So this is something about your heart and your breathing. Um, day to day, when we're busy in life, our, our heart rate variability looks like that. So the minute we start to do, do deep breathing, and I'm being more gracious, but it starts to move out like that. That's calm. <laughs> That's peaceful. I don't want to be over here. Men's heart shall fail them for fear, the Word of God said. Word of God's been around longer than medicine. So... Um, just an example of all the things that change just with oxygen and doing deep breathing, okay? Your cognition goes up as well. Cold hands and feet will eventually improve, and your immune system goes up because your cortisol levels lower. So we're going to do, um, we're going to listen to some music. I'll tell you a little bit about how I do my deep breathing. We're going to listen to music for 10 minutes, and I want to encourage you all to do this little activation. The music's absolutely beautiful, so you'll love that. Um, uh, There's something that's called a bolt score. 
Okay, that is how you can score what your breathing is. An optimum BOLT score runs 25 to 45, okay? Um, when I first did this breathing pattern, I was at 15, so I was encouraging because I thought I was doing really well in life. So now, you know, what is it, months, months, a year later, I'm at uh, 30, 35, 30, 30. So, so it, you too can change your BOLT score. Okay? So what that is, is that you, you take a deep breath in, just as you normally would. You don't have to do it now, do it at home. And um, hit your timer, and then count how many minutes, how many seconds, <laughs> how many seconds it takes you to actually, actually have to have that breath. Okay? And that is your bolt score, and you can find out where you're at and where, you know, what you could improve on. And then for mouth breathing, to train yourself. Now, if you're sick, I am not an MD, and I'm not telling you to go tape your mouth shut, okay? So just hear me now. If you're sick, don't do this, okay? They have mouth tape now that you can put all the way around your lips. I suggest just getting a piece of scotch tape during the day and just putting a little piece right here and just tape your mouth shut when no one's looking. Somebody will be happy. Anyway, just kidding. Um, so you walk around and just try to see how long it takes you to open your mouth and start breathing, you know, because it just brings your cognitive awareness to how you're breathing, right? Now, I was reading books about taking a deep breath, okay, and, and letting it in and out. So my mechanism for doing it is you breathe in, you take your, get your full breath in, Okay, the first three I do, I do, I usually lay in down when I do it. You're supposed to sit up, but it still works. And I contract my abdominal muscles, you know, I pull everything in. I want all of my breath to move into my chest, okay? Or I'll envision it going fully up my spine into my brain because the Lord knows I need all the oxygen up there I can get, okay? So the whole point is, is that it's, it's um, as soon as you get to the top of your breath, then you hold for four seconds, not one, two, three, four, five. It's one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand. And then you let it out. You're breathing in through your nose, out through your nose, and finish with your mouth. And, and you breathe out, key, six to eight seconds. Okay? All right. And so the reason you do deep and long is because the, um, most of the blood vessels and the exchange of, of oxygen is in the lower lung fields, okay? All right, so here we go. I'll do one, and don't worry what anybody thinks. Who cares what anybody thinks? You know, you're just, we're all just practicing, you know? Yeah, it's just, who cares? I don't care. Okay, so you're gonna take a deep, just watch me. I like to close my eyes, pretend like you're not watching me. Okay, I should lay down, actually, is what I should do, because it's better. <laughs> I'll even shrug my shoulders sometimes and then relax when I get to the top of my breath. I did it through my mouth. So that's how easy it is. And then you get better and better and better at it. And you improve and your life begins to improve. Your thinking improves. Your heart rate variability will change, okay? So I'm going to cue the magic men up there. And our ladies, sorry if there's a lady up there. And um, let's listen. And just practice breathing. That's the best church service I ever had, how to breathe. <laughs> how to breathe for life.
taking me up. that just beautiful music just so awe-inspiring 
while I was um, sitting there, I was breathing, praying, um, the Lord reminded me um, that in the epistles it says over and over and over again that Jesus is in me and I'm in Jesus. So Jesus is in you and you're seated in him and he's seated in heaven and we're seated with him at the right hand of God the Father. And so some of you may have felt a shift. Some of you may have felt awkward. But the point is to practice, practice, practice. And um, your body will refresh and rejuvenate and restore. And, you know, it says our youth is renewed like the eagles, right? I have to write that proper this time. Anyway, um, so if that's the case, and we're constantly ascending into the heavenlies, then the renewal will begin to participate with your body, and you'll have that beautiful refreshing come and come in greater waves the more you practice it. It's it's quite phenomenal. But as you're in Jesus and Jesus is in you, you know, those are some of the meditations. Ava, where are you, Ava? Are you in here? Um, yeah, tomorrow she'll be here. Um, she was talking about when, when she does some of her meditations, she says that I'm in Jesus and Jesus is in me, you know. And so that's beautiful because Jesus is in you. He is the tree of life. In the Garden of Eden, like I was saying in the beginning, when God created the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life, we're to eat and participate with the tree of life. And then when Jesus stepped out and breathed on his disciples, he said, receive the Holy Spirit, and life went into them. Where in Acts, when he breathed, it was the power that came out of him. So we have access to all of those, so which we'll get into. But anyway, um, so I just, how you do it is up to you. You know, there's lots of videos on meditation. Uh, Justin Abraham, he's always edgy. He, um, he did a 10-minute um, meditation video, and he has some great, great insights to that as well. I would just encourage you to watch his 10-minute video if you want more on it. So that is it for the evening. And I bless you guys, and I thank you for taking the time to come. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, yeah they, they're available in the back. I'll ship them down here. I'm going to mind up. Hello, hello. Thank you. So, uh, thank you, Johnette. Um, I wanted to say something. I don't think the church has done well at um, <clears throat> at focusing on holistic wellness, spirit, soul, and body. I just don't think we've done well at that. I don't think there's been a, a proper uh, focus on that. But God gave us each of those, spirit, soul, and body. And we need to be healthy in all of those. So uh, Dr. Johnette has written a book called Well, Well, Well. And it, uh, it I've not read it, I've just perused it. I'm a professional book peruser. But, I, but I'm interested in it because it has three sections and each section has three parts, body, soul, and spirit. But it's how to restore your 
body, soul, and spirit, how to rebuild your body, soul, and spirit, and how to refresh your body, soul, and spirit. And I think this is really, really important, uh, especially going forward. I, I think it's always been important, but I think right now God is um, uh, helping us to focus on it. So anyway, she has these books in the back. And um, I'd, I'd like to encourage you to get them. And um, I also want to say this. Meditation has been forfeited by the church and co-opted by the New Age. And uh, it's, it's really tragic because... Meditation is something that is all through the Word of God. It's one of the favorite themes of David, the man after God's own heart. And we need to learn to do it uh, better, and we need to, to discipline ourselves to take time to do it. Now, let me say this. I'm, I'm talking to you, but I'm... I'm also uh, talking to myself here because uh, I think all of us are a lot like that little video clip of DJ and Rachel. And I know it happens with Cheryl and I and, and you know, one of us will be texting on the phone and, and the other one will be wondering if, if they're paying attention, right? And... Um, that is a problem in society, but as bad as that is with your wife or your kids, uh, I, I think it's uh, aggravated, and I think it's uh, in uh, epidemic proportions when it comes to us being preoccupied and not focusing on God. And I have noticed this. I've read a lot about the miracle workers in the church age. And I've not yet found one of them that wasn't a meditator. They all, they, they meditated as a lifestyle. It wasn't something that they tacked on. Every one of the miracle workers that I've ever read about was someone who uh, learned to meditate and did it regularly in their life. So I just thought I'd throw that in at the end of this evening. <laughs> Dr. Johnette, thank you for that. That was wonderful. So <laughs> may your meditations of him be sweet. God bless you. You're dismissed and see you tomorrow. <laughs>